What's up fam? I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You're on my show. We do every Tuesday called the Iron Palace. It's part of Team Flex TV, one of five, five awesome shows. I'm running all week for you where we cover everything. Iron Palace is dedicated towards training. Today, in conjunction with yesterday's video, Nutrition for Wellness Prep, we're going to talk about wellness training. All right, I'm going to give you a lot of different ideas regarding how to train for wellness, different types of phases, even exercise selection and splits you should strongly consider doing. If you are somebody that wants to be doing wellness, you're already doing wellness, or you know, you're trying to get to the next level in wellness, this video will really help you, at least give you some ideas and a good place to start or continue to build upon with your current routine. So let's dive right on in. Basically, I'm doing this video because I get so many questions about wellness. It's the new addition to the NPC and IFBB roster, the women's divisions, newest division we got on the board. And uh, basically, I need to break it down for you because you might be here for the first time. It's a good reminder for everybody else too. Wellness is a more lower body dominant version of bikini. Now, a lot of people say, you know, bikini and wellness, they're the same. No, they're not the same. They really don't look the same. And if you think they look the same, it's because you ain't got no trained eyes. All right. And that's a, a big issue, honestly, across the board for competitors, coaches. Um, it blows my mind that coaches can't see this difference, but the difference is there. And if you have time to ever talk to any of the judges at events or anything like that, they can really tell you. But let me tell you this, things on Instagram, things in photos, things, all that looks way different than what's actually being seen on stage by the judges where the judges actually sit. I can tell you guys, however, from a coaching perspective, very obvious the differences in the physiques and the NPC does a really great job on NPC News of Online um, of really describing what they're looking for in this division, okay? And so, just to recap, break it down real fast for you. Basically, the upper body muscle-wise is going to be pretty similar to current today's bikini. Maybe just a tad bit more muscular than bikini, but not, not super developed, not like figure or any you know, other women's division like that. It's not heavily muscle uh, in the upper body, all right? You know, the midsection, the abs, all that, people ask about the abs. What's up with the abs? It's the same as bikini. They're never looking for specific abs. You don't need to have a six-pack. You need to have a flat stomach. You need to, you know, obviously be in shape condition when you're on stage, but you don't need a six pack. You, you know, you don't need it for either one of these divisions, but also not in wellness. When we get into the lower body, this is where things take a big different turn and why this division is really here. Uh, the lower body in wellness is more developed than bikini by a lot. We're talking way more development in the glutes, way more development in the quads, way more development in the hamstrings. Overall, an asymmetrical appearance to the upper body. It's the only division like this in the women's divisions, okay? Bikini's much more symmetrical. You want to see a lot more shape. You're still looking at hourglass and all that, but you want to see it be, you know, proportionate. And in wellness, you actually want to be unproportionate. You want to have more lower body muscle than you do upper, and that is what really differentiates it from bikini in the first place, okay? And so that's really important to understand anybody watching this, whether you're a coach, you're someone trying to do this, or anything like that. I'm going to dive into a lot more of the specific stuff you really want want to know about your physique, how it should look, how you can train for it, and the splits as we move forward in just a second. But first, I really want to dive into the phases. What's the most important phases of the goal? What's the most important thing for your physique and understanding why you can't just follow some generic plan or some generic idea or do your bikini competitor workouts and think you'll get a wellness physique? We're going to cover all that right after the break. One, two, three. Let's dive right on in here and start talking about 
phases of training, okay? In this video today, I'm going to talk to you about training for wellness, splits, exercise, things like that you will want to know about and you could utilize and really get some results. But you really got to understand that it really depends on what phase of training you're actually in. And now basically as a wellness competitor, you're going through two phases of training for the most part. You're either going to be actively competing in a prep or between shows, prepping for another, it's all prep, okay? You're in a prep phase or you're going to be in a guess what it's called? Improvement season phase. That's why I call it. A lot of people call it off season. It's your build phase. You know, in other words, you're preparing for the prep phase. So that's kind of the two phases you're in. Your training will look different in these phases. All right. Your training is going to be a lot more intense, probably in the sense of doing supersets, drop sets, you know, higher cardiovascular demanding stuff with your weight training in a prep phase than it will be in an actual building phase. These are two different things you're trying to shoot for, all right? In a prep phase, the goal is to diet down. You already should have the right muscle. You should already be at the good spot to start dieting in and dial in for your competition. But it's not a phase where you're trying to add new muscle or build muscle or do any of that. You're going to be in a calorie deficit. If you guys watched Protein Power yesterday, we talked about prep nutrition. You're going to be in a calorie deficit. So you're not going to be building muscle anyway. And you need to be doing extra stuff, intensity protocols, to really kick the fat loss up and get yourself to stage conditioning. So a lot of times this is going to be a lot more, you know, high intensity stuff doing supersets and drop sets and, you know, mini circuits and all sorts of basically cardio in the gym while you're lifting. Go figure. Higher reps, more volume, you know, all this stuff really comes into play in any prep, but especially in a wellness prep. So that's important to know. In your building phase, improvement season phase, where this would be a phase where your goal is to attain the correct muscle before you can actually go do a prep and go be successful at a show, well, this is where you build. You're going to be in a caloric surplus. Your calories are up. We talked about all the nutrition yesterday, so if you missed that video, go back. Watch Protein Power. Um, but basically, you know, you're in a phase where you're building, so you're doing a lot more strength work. You got the calories to support the gains, and you're doing heavy stuff. You're doing heavy reps tempo work, you know, a lot more rest between sets so you can keep that weight up. And basically, you're always training for these PRs. You know, you're trying to get stronger. You're trying to build muscle. You're trying to add new stuff. So you're going to be doing strength training reps in the five, six ranges, you know, for reps wise, maybe five sets even of that. And then you're going to be doing hypertrophy stuff, eight to 10, 12 reps sometimes where, you know, you're doing, again, high volume to really shape and build the muscle. These are the things that you got to consider in your phases. Another thing you really got to look at no matter what level you're at, what phase you are, is the customization of your training. I just covered for you guys what wellness is, what it's about, how you know you really need to look on stage to actually do well, but you gotta understand, everybody is genetically structured different. Everybody's different, and everybody's been training different prior to probably training for wellness. There's a few people in the world, probably, that are coming off the couch, they've never worked out in their life, and they wanna train for wellness. Most people have already been training, which means they've been you know, maybe they were a bikini competitor before, maybe they never compete before, but they've been building, you know, their shoulders or whatever. They had their own goals, right? And basically what happens is you got to look at every person different. And this is why I always say, hey, don't do the generic stuff. Don't try to Google yourself a training program for wellness or something like that. I'm sure you can find some garbage, but it's going to be garbage. Because at the end of the day, if you're not training custom for you, you're not doing what's specific for your physique and your body to get from where you are now to where you need to be on stage, it's a waste of time and it's a waste of effort and it's just not going to work. So you really need to understand, you need a quality physique assessment, right? You need to know where you're at and you need to know where you need to be. You need to know what needs to come up, what might need to come down and what things need to change in your body to present the best on stage. Because let's remember, the, the competitions in wellness, they're not a dieting competition. They are not a training competition. They are a damn bodybuilding competition, which means that you got to get up there and show your best, present and get off stage and hopefully go home with some trophies, right? That's the goal. But it's not about how well you dieted or how well you followed some generic training program. You got to get the right physique. You got to get the right elements for your physique. And this is different from everybody. You guys, I've trained thousands, thousands of competitors over the years. I will tell you straight up, there's some things that do stay relevant. You know, people need to do squats. People need to do deadlifts. People need to do variants of these things. But there's all sorts of different stuff you got to bring in for each person and really customize it and adjust based on their check-ins and you know where they're at, where they're progressing, where they're going, and every physique 
is different. So you really gotta understand that. And in just a minute, I'm gonna dive right into actual training splits that I would suggest that are kinda, you know, basic level rules for what you could start with, some exercises that you should have, and I just want you to know in advance that I'm not telling you to just do this and expect to get a wellness physique. You're still gonna need that customization. And that's something you can experience actually on our trial. Check it out right now. Seriously, if you have not checked out that trial and you made it this far in this video and you want to see some real splits, you want me to set you some up, I'm happy to do it. It's part of our free trial. We offer it for free. Go over there and do it. You got nothing to lose, no card and no money at all. Seven day trial. You could just get these free wellness workouts and take them with you and have a great time. All right. Seriously, go check out that trial, teamffelex.com. Just put your email in the box, instant invitation. Let's dive right in here to training splits I would suggest. Again, I want to make note, this is not something I'm saying you can just take, run with, and go and have a, you know, a stellar wellness physique that's going to get your first call out and beyond. This is a good framework. This is a good idea. This is something to consider whatever you're doing. All right, You want to have a training split set up. And if you don't understand what a training split is, it basically means how you break up the areas of your body you're training throughout the week. All right, Some people do you know, full body workouts. Some people do one muscle a day. Some people do a couple muscles a day. I'm going to give you what I suggest based on my experience, based on what I'm doing, based on what I have wellness competitors doing. All right, here's one. Start with day one being an upper body day. All right, and this is to start your week off. So you've started, you know, you had your rest days, your weekend, whatever, I don't know, Monday, let's just call it Monday. You're starting with upper body. And I suggest you do a combination of back and shoulders, okay? Back and shoulders. You need some back in wellness, even though you're not gonna show it, your hair will be down, ladies. You're not gonna show your back musculature, but it does help the shape. You gotta have that shape in your front pose, in your quarter turns, in your back pose. So you do wanna train your back, okay? And different exercise you could be doing, obviously, you know, some of the basics are good. Vertical pulls, horizontal pulls, things like that to really train the back. You're gonna get a lot of low back training actually doing the leg stuff you gotta do for wellness, right? But the back is important. You got to have that shape. You need a little bit of a taper. You want to have a little lat showing, you know, in your front pose and your side pose and all that. It really shows that you have the right level of muscle development. This is the same in bikini. We see that same thing in bikini, right? The top bikini athletes have that same exact thing going on, okay? So, you know, lat pull downs, behind the neck lat pull downs, rows of any kind, T-bar rows, barbell rows, low cable rows. I generally say stick to free weights and dumbbells, okay? Okay, so barbells, dumbbells is best. Obviously cables and things like that can come and play where they're needed for your physique. When it comes to shoulders, obviously shoulders are very important in wellness. Ladies, you gotta have the shoulders to really give you the shape. You need that shape because again, we're trying to equate to what's basically modern day, you know, bend bikini for a while now uh, in the upper body with maybe just a little bit more muscle because it, you can kind of offset with the legs a bit in this division. And when you're doing shoulders, it's important that you have this shape coming down to, you know, widen you out on top, narrow you in in the middle a little bit, and then come out into the legs. And well, it's kind of this hourglass shape we always talk about, this X shape, you know, that translates into wellness too. Not as much as bikini per se, but it's still there and that's something the judge is going to want to see in your posing and all that. The posing, if you don't know, by the way, in wellness is very similar to every, you know, kind of bikini posing we've seen in a while, aside from comparisons where we're doing quarter turns and things like that. But in other words, a lot of the same rules apply for what the judges are going to be looking for. So you want to have the right shoulders. You need to be doing some compounds, you know, barbell overhead press, Arnold presses, um, lateral raises, front raises, rear delt raises, all kinds of raises you can think about, upright rows, things like that that are going to really target the development and you got to do it in the right rep ranges and all those things I talked about. Understand your phases. That's very, very important. Okay. That would be your kind of, you know, 
day one, if you will, and you're going to be doing a lot of sets, a lot of reps, depending on where you're at. You know, I have most people doing three, four sets for the upper body on these kind of days um, per exercise, and you know, maybe eight to ten more exercises, depends on the person. Now, moving into a day two, we want to let the upper body recover. So day two, we're going to do lower body. And I suggest breaking this up in a way where you're doing either anterior one day or posterior another day. And that means the front of your body, so you know your quads basically, and then on a different day, your glutes and your hams. And that really just allows you to get really good development, really good recovery, right? Because at the end of the day, more sets, more reps don't mean anything if we don't recover. So I would suggest on a... Uh, Lower body day, you know, let's say it's anterior day on Tuesday. We're gonna do quads. And really with the quads, again, how could we not talk about squats? Squats are gonna be the number one, something you really wanna hit hard. You wanna be doing front squats, back squats, all different kinds of squats, hack squats, belt squats. You know, this is really how you get the leg development. I know a lot of people think it's leg extension after leg extension. No, that's an accessory. Where you're gonna get that solid development you need, especially for wellness in the legs, it's gonna come from doing squats and getting proficient, being able to get heavy and really hit it hard. Those things are gonna Gonna be huge, all right. Obviously, you do want to work in some leg extension things like that. Sissy squats, those are so good. Love those for all wellness type competitors. Honestly, anybody trying to build quads, it's phenomenal exercise. Um, and really, what you want to do is hit the legs very hard, high volume, five sets, maybe six sets of exercises where you're doing all different rep ranges, strength rep ranges. You know, four to six, eight to ten for hypertrophy, sometimes beyond. Everything has to have a goal for your physique, but you really got to hammer the legs very very hard you should not be able to move right the next day because you got to be in that recovery mode in that build mode right so that would be my day two you know focusing on a front zone of a leg day we're really attacking the quads you know obviously you're going to get work in the glutes and the hamstrings on this type of day but the goal is not that the goal mentally and the goal going into a training is to hit the quads and this is really how you get that solid leg development let's dive into the rest of the split right after the break So after our first day, it's basically an upper body and a lower body, right? Targeted. We're doing different areas of the body. We did back and shoulders on a Monday. We're doing anterior front of the legs, the quads on a Tuesday. Now a Wednesday zone here in your split could be one of two things. I either have people doing abs, which is basically a recovery. I have them doing it in a circuit format where you know you're just pumping out. It's more cardio than anything. Um, you know, some light work, not weighted. We don't want to bulk out in the mid zone here, anything like that. Or you're taking a full rest day. All right, and this is because if you're training very, very hard, and you're training very, very intensely, and you're doing this the way I just said, and you're doing it with all these exercises, all these sets, pushing yourself to the limits, you need to recover to grow. Let's not forget that more time in the gym does not correlate to more results. Better time spent in the gym and more time recovering equates to better results. Your muscles don't build when we're doing sets and reps. In other words, they break down and they rebuild when we eat right and we sleep and we recover. So they could be really good to do a recovery day, especially if you're in an improvement season, off season competitor, wellness competitor trying to you know build. Maybe you just do a full off day. If you're in prep and you need to really you know keep the cardio level going up, maybe an ab day. And this can be variance for everybody. Again, all custom physique. Very easy day though. If you're doing abs, it's circuits, it's light stuff, it's high reps, there's no weights. Um, you, again, you don't want to bulk yourself out and abs are not something we need in this division at all. You don't even need to have it. You just need to have a well toned, toned, defined midsection if you will, which means your body fat needs to be at the right spot. You could diet your way there and do zero abs and for some people that's what they have to do because if they start doing abs, they start to square out which is not going to be good for wellness. All right, So that would be that day, it's either a rest or an ab day which is basically an active recovery. Now we roll straight to Thursday. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to hit the upper body again. And again, the focus now becomes, for me, what I suggest, more shoulders. Do some shoulders 
and do some arms. And this is another upper body day. Again, it's not the hugest, most important thing in this division at all. Wellness, we're talking about the legs being the key, but you do gotta have that upper body. We need that shoulder shape. So I suggest, hey, hit those shoulders again. We know we need it. We know what needs to be seen in the front pose, the quarter turns, even the back pose. They wanna see the shoulders, you know, the roundness, the development. So again, you're in the shoulders and you're doing a lot of the same exercises. There's no magic pill, there's no special exercises. You're doing pushes, you're doing presses, you're doing front raises, you're doing lateral raises, you're doing reverse flies, you're doing all kinds of things to hit the shoulders, all right? And you're keeping those reps in the hypertrophy zone. If you did a little heavier Monday, you're gonna go a little lighter here, or vice versa. And basically what you're doing is trying to target that development, get that roundness, get that shape, and keep it. Shoulders for a lot of people, very hard to build, very hard to keep on. So that's why I say, you know, put it in twice a week. Get them in there, keep them in there. Once you get them, keep them going because you're doing that. Now you need a little bit of arm training. And wellness is not huge on arms. They're not going to be scoring your bicep tendons or you know your bicep flexes, your bicep veins, or anything else you got going on. What they want to see though is some development. Obviously, you got to have that match. You know the shoulder development to a degree in this category. So a little bit of arm training. You're already getting a lot when you're doing you know your shoulders. You're doing a lot of triceps. When you're doing your back, you're doing a lot of biceps. It's just the way the body works. So you don't need a ton. And when we're going into the arm training, you know it's very simple stuff. Usually I have people superset a lot of this even in their improvement season phases just because it's a more effective way to hit it and we're talking about very small muscle groups that also don't matter much for this actual division. So, you know, basic stuff. Barbell curls, dumbbell curls, hammer curls. And you might do for triceps, skull crushers, maybe some close grip push-ups, push downs on a rope or bar. Very basic, lower exercises here, you know, three, four sets maybe of, of three, four, five, six exercises, depending um, if you're supersetting or you're just doing normal standard sets. And that's where you would be. And that's pretty much it. You know, hitting the shoulders harder, hitting the arms just a little bit, getting that right definition, keeping that muscle on you. And that's what's really gonna be most beneficial about your actual upper body day here. Now, we're gonna take that to the next day, the final training day of the week. Here I said final. This is where too many people get caught up. They train too much in this category. Final training day of the week. Glutes, hamstrings, it's another lower body day. Again, we talked about in wellness, one of the most important things is this glute and hamstring development, all right? So getting that is key, you gotta have that. Same with the quads, we already talked about the quads though. Now we wanna take a leg day that focuses primarily on glutes and hamstrings. So now we start doing a lot more stuff like hip thrusts, and we're doing all different reps, all different sets, high, high volume. You wanna be hitting a lot of stuff, four, five, six sets of things with higher reps sometimes, maybe lower depending on the phase if you're growing, or if you're in prep, whatever, it all changes, but you're hitting, you know, hip thrusts. You're doing squats here again, probably at this point, maybe a different emphasis, pulling box squat or something like that. You know, you might do some glute ham developer, one of the best exercises, I think, for developing the glute hams. Coincidentally, it's called the glute ham developer, I don't know. And, uh, you know, deadlifts, stiff leg deadlifts, sumo deadlifts, conventional deadlifts. Again, remember I said in wellness, you're getting a lot of lower back work, you don't have to do it on your back day because you're doing all this stuff if for your leg days where your lower back is gonna be working all the damn time for you. So basically, you know, we're looking at these exercises where we're gonna target all these specifics. You might do some cable work here, some accessory stuff where we're doing kickbacks, lateral kickbacks, all different stuff to shape and get you right where you need to be for this category. But again, the compounds can't be ignored. Notice how everything we've talked about has been compounds. I'm gonna say it again, I suggest primarily using barbells, dumbbells to develop your physique, build the muscle, and then you know shape it out do things with cables machines rarely I don't have a lot of people doing a lot of machines and if I do it's for a very specific reason and that's it their physique and that's it the majority of your benefits gonna come from training in the right way getting the right muscular development and that comes from being proficient in compound exercises all right so that would be the next wellness leg day and we're gonna dive into more about this in just a second after the break Sleep. 
If you didn't do that trial yet, you're crazy, get over there. I'll show you how to train for it. I've said a lot in this video. I can't even believe we're already at 25 minutes and I feel like I could say so much more and I can on the other side in our coaching app on our free trial. I can lay the workouts out for you. I can show you exactly how to do it and trust me, no matter what, even if you never do a program or anything with us, you're gonna get better because you did the trial. So go over there, teamffelex.com, put your email in, very simple, ladies and gents. I hope you do that, all right? Let's kind of wrap this thing up. So that would be the end of the wellness training week for most clients that I'd be working with, even if they're in prep or an improvement phase, right? Obviously in improvement phase, we're doing a lot more rest, not cardio, nothing like that, not a lot of high intensity stuff, more dedicated towards strength and development, but in prep, we're doing a lot more of that, you know, cardio, supersets, drop sets, basically getting cardio while lifting you know, for lack of a better way to put it. But that's where you need to stay. And here's the thing. I know a lot of people are like, whoa, I thought I should train glutes every day. I, should, I thought I should be doing glutes and hamstrings three times a week, four times a week. You know, I thought I need way more shoulders than that. I thought I need way more back than, no, you don't. Here's the problem. In this category and in most categories, when people try to train for these things, people get off the grid here with these divisions and think that they need to be doing more, they need to be doing more, they need to be doing more. No, what you need to be doing is the right stuff. You need to do the right stuff as good as you can do it like as good as you possibly can do it, and then you have to recover. Muscles are never built anywhere in the gym. You're, you're training in the gym to break them down, right? That's the breakdown process, and when you leave the gym and you eat the right way, you get the protein, you get the macros right, you know, then you do the recovery correctly, that's when you grow. The biggest problem with people in the bodybuilding industry in general is they do too much and they end up wasting muscle versus preserving it. And no matter what phase you're in, if you're trying to grow or you're trying to actually do a prep, you need to preserve your muscle. Because if you're growing, you're not gonna grow if you're not getting enough rest and if you're on prep you're gonna burn your muscle off your body if you're not getting enough rest so this is very important that you understand this it's a fine line between training very hard very intense and otherwise spending a very good amount of time in optimal recovery all right so it's very important that you have the right workouts laid out, the right training sessions. You got to target it with the right macros and everything else. That's why I said earlier in this video, hey, don't take this as just a see all, be all. You can do this and it's good to go. You write down everything I said for workouts and you're going to do them good. I mean, you definitely get a long way doing that. You definitely get a lot of progress to start, but you're going to have to fine tune. You got to adjust when you're training as a competitor. It's a constant assessment of where you are versus where you need to be with check-ins, seeing where you're at, seeing where your weight's at, are things changing? Are we moving the right direction here and there? And adjusting. If you're not adjusting, you're failing. And this is why I say don't try to do this type of stuff yourself. Get yourself a coach that can help you. Somebody that knows what the judges are looking for. Somebody that can show you how to get it. And somebody that can keep you on the right track because you will mentally take yourself off the wrong the track every single day sometimes as a competitor trying to assess your physique, figure out where you're going. And just, you know, it's too much to do. All right, so I strongly suggest that if you have not, you go check out that free trial. It'll help you a ton. If you want to train for wellness, we do that on teamflex.com. We got wellness coaching programs. We'll take you to the stage. We'll get there. We'll do it the right way. You can check that out too. And otherwise, I hope that even if you don't do any of that, that you got something out of this that will help you. And I'll never hear from you. I'll never know about you, but you'll got better because of what we said today on Iron Palace, all right? So this is the train of wellness this week. Tomorrow I'm going to bring you some more wellness topics on first call outs. And that's our show dedicated towards competitors, teaching you how to get in to the first call out. We covered nutrition yesterday for wellness prep on Protein Power. Check that out. You watch today. And tomorrow we'll be back. First call outs, all right? I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. Appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and share. Thank you so much. Coach Rye is out.